Hey guys, today I'm going to be covering the awesome Windows utility called Sizer App. We're going to get into it more later, but Sizer allows you to build your own presets for exactly the size of your windows and exactly the position of your windows. And this is such a time saver because Windows never gets this right. So if you do a quick Google for Sizer App, it should come right up, brianapps.net slash Sizer4. There is a Sizer version 3, and even though Brian, the author, is calling Sizer 4 a preview version, I've been using Sizer 4 for at least six months, and it's been working awesome for me. So don't worry about the fact that it's a preview. You can go ahead and click on either the installer or the, um, the portable binary-only version. I went with the installer. So once you've got the installer, you can go ahead and double-click on it. And it blocked it for me, um, but like I said, this thing is fine. So you can click on More Info and Run Anyway. And it should pop up with the installer and you can just go ahead and install it. Um, I like to use Start Sizer every time Windows starts. And I get rid of these. It's just always running for me. I've already got it installed, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel. So once you do have it installed and running, it should pop up in the corner here. And you'll see you have Sizer 4.0. When I right click on it, you get a configuration option. And this is where the heart of the application is. So you can see I've got a whole bunch of presets for me that I've been configuring over the last you know year or so. And let's go ahead and click on my recording one. Now I use this all the time for making these videos because I have an ultra wide display and ultra wide does not look good when you try to put it into video. So let me show you an example. So here's how I like to run Visual Studio Code. And it gives me a nice big window on my giant screen. But, but when I'm recording, it doesn't look good on video. So I will hit my Sizer hotkey and you'll see it pops up with all the options I have preset. Now I can go into these menus and choose exactly. But I have this preset which works perfectly recording for 1080p. Bam, it pops it right into position. So this is a perfect 1080p window. And then I can transition smoothly into only showing the VS Code screen. Let's say I want to go back to it. Uh, it's named Max with TPK. It doesn't really mean anything to you, but to me, it pops it up back into my big screen so I can get working again nice and comfortable. So here's another way. I like to have my browser big like this on the other side of my code, but when I'm recording, I have another preset for it uh, called Recording 720p Browser, and that pops it in right in this position. So when I'm recording, I can have my code and my small little browser window right next to each other. So on to going through some of the configuration. So if we go to options, you can actually customize the shortcut key you want. And I don't remember what the default is, but I've changed mine to control shift alt Z. That works really quickly for me. I don't, I've just gotten used to it. Now there's also a tool tip when you're resizing. So let me show you that. Um, so here I've got a really tiny window. And if you look where my mouse is, you can see as I'm moving it around, it's showing me the width and the height that I'm getting to. And this has been so useful for me as well when I'm trying to get a specific size that I haven't got a preset for, and I'm trying to learn what the value is that I've configured it to. So you can switch it to position and size, and it'll show you your positions 1272, 272. That's funny. I'm going to go ahead and change that back, though. So let's say you like this position. This is terrible, but let's say you like it. And you can hit your sizer hotkey and do current as new entry. And it'll pop up with a new thing with the presets we've just seen. It has it set to 1272 and 272. And the width is what it is right now. I'll set the description to bad coding experience and hit OK. And then hit apply. So now, you know, I can resize it, move it around, and then I can go back to my sizer hotkey, hit bad coding experience, and bam, it's exactly where you left it. So I'll like to use current as new entry as a way to start to get around where I want to be. And I'll usually end up going into the edit mode to kind of precisely pinpoint where I want it to be. So usually that'll be like, maybe the width will be a little off. I might wake at like 7.30 or 4.10 or something just to make it, you know, very precise, very accurate. If you have multiple monitors as well, you can set some of these other presets, like which monitor you want to use. Of course, I only have one. Um, you can also set whether you want to use the monitor coordinates or your whole area coordinates. Now, work area coordinates is a little weird. Basically, the idea of work area is that all of your monitors in your whole monitor setup are under one giant monitor in terms of the coordinate system. I just love that he lets you have 
the control over the right menu exactly. So I've got my most common... Well, get rid of this one. Or is it delete? But I've got my most common presets up at the top. And then these default ones, I actually use these a fair bit. Like the 4x3 ones I've used before for various purposes. And you can go ahead and add your own groups as well. So if you click add other, you can add a separator, which is really cool. So that gives you your, oh, let's apply it. Gives you these nice right click menu separators and you have full control over that. Uh, you can also add a group and a group is kind of like a folder in the right menu tree structure. Oh God, I spelled folder wrong. Let's fix that and move it down, hit apply. And you can see now you've got a folder here and it doesn't have any options. If you want to move the position of your size or options, you can use these move up and move down keys. If there would be any updates to this, having this be drag and drop sortable would be amazing. If I'm being honest, like this is not the end of the world. And basically once you get it the way you want it to be, having to click move up and move down like 50 times, it's fine. You just do it once and it's all set and it's never forgotten. So that's it for Sizer app. I really hope you guys can find some use for this utility because I absolutely love using this thing. If you like this video and you want to see more automation scripts and tutorials, check out my other videos. See ya.